Hey there, it's Daniel from thegoodax.com, where you can get free Google Docs templates and guides. Let's overview the most important Google Docs updates over the recent month that you will absolutely love. Google constantly adds tons of new features to Google Docs, but usually they're limited to minor changes and fixes that go unnoticed due to their small significance. Yet this time and over the past few months, there were so many of them that we can't help but tell you about it and overview them to make your work with Google Docs more productive and convenient. Or at least you will know what you're missing. The first on the very surface is the user interface update. Not much to say here. But basically, when browsing these tabs, you can notice that for the majority of functions, Google added a lot of new original icons. And now nearly every function has its own icon, the graphical association. In comparison to all the versions, it looks like this. Which actually makes up to a really big number of new icons. And this was a little one to warm up. Now, most importantly, new useful functions and features. For a start, the checklists. Since this is a list, you start it the same way by a format. But it's a numbering and just checklist here. Or with this icon on a toolbar, clicking on a little arrow and selecting checklist. The rules are the same as for the other list types. To add a next checkbox, enter something on the first line. And when you're ready to continue, press enter at the end of the line. Type something in it and keep going. And it works the same way for the sub checkboxes. So after you've added a new box and the line is empty, press tab on a keyboard instead of entering text. And here it is. Then enter something. And you can keep adding new items to the list by pressing enter at the end of each line. Or you can push the bullets even farther to the right by pressing tab on the empty line with a sub check box once again. And if you want to return to adding regular boxes, hit enter on an empty line with the sub check box a few times to return them in the original form. And also you can apply the checkbox list formatting to already written text. But the data has to be on a separate lines like this. So when you have it like this, select it all and go to the format, down to the bullets and numbering line and then checklist. Here you go. To finish editing the list and return to normal text, hit enter on the empty line with the checkbox. And as usual, you can change the text color in the list, but the box will take the same color as the text. And the same goes for the highlight color. Then it's an updated quick watermark function, which now allows you to just quickly type in a text and put it over a page just like a regular image watermark, but with no image this time. Go to Insert. And then there's watermark here, which brings up a tab on the right. And here you normally select an image to use as the watermark, but this time we're looking for the text here. This is where you type in the text for your watermark and instantly see a result. Then it's formatting, starting from the font, then the size, bold and italic formattings, and the text color. But if you change it, then you'll need to adjust the transparency manually here by moving the slider. And then how you want to put it, diagonal or horizontal. And now you have it on every page of the document. Basically, the method is just great when you need to put a watermark on every single page of the document real fast without even creating an image. The next on the list is the pageless document format, which basically removes all these empty areas around the page with content, forming a uniform surface for the sake of increasing the focus. 
you turn it on by going to file and then the page setup down here. And here's this button to switch to pageless format. Here you can see what it actually does. Then you can change the background color in this drop down and hit OK to apply. Now, this is a single continuous sheet with no empty space left and right and with no page breaks. Yet, it keeps these original margins that don't let text go further left or right. And Google came up with a fix to that. Navigate to view, then text width, and then medium or white. And this is how you maximize the working area. Fill in the empty space with content, making it look like a web page. Unfortunately, this feature breaks columns, page numbers, headers, footers, and makes printing broken as well. But the good sides are the increased focus, increased working area, and making the content on page inseparable. They can use to make bigger figures like large tables, charts, drawings, and others. Then, we have a summary of the doc to give viewers a brief overview of the document content, as simple as it sounds. Turn it on by going to View and then Show Outline. Now, before the exact outline with settings, you have the summary line. Press on the plus icon and enter the summary. I'll paste what I have. And hit Enter to save it. There we go. Return to editing it by clicking on the pen icon or clear the text to remove the summary. Then is the table template with lots of other things that come with this feature. So there are classic tables in Google Docs, where you select the number of cells and get in the most simple table like this one. But back in the menu, insert and table. There's this new line, the table templates, with four templates to choose from. And we'll start from the product roadmap. You have certainly seen this in many other project management services. There's nothing new. But since a lot of teams run their business via Google services, this is quite a significant feature. And here you have all the common items, project name, its status with this new drawdown feature, fields for links to the files, and the notes. And since this is a table, you can add new columns and rows. There you will definitely need to give more details about the project. And then you know it. Enter the relevant data regarding your project and you have a simple roadmap to share with the team. The next new feature comes within the table templates. These drop-downs with color labels, offering three statuses. Not started, in progress and launched. Then you click on and change the status of the stage. Or you open the drop-down and with this button add new options or edit the existing. Here you enter the name for this specific template. Then the names for every item on the list in these fields. Then we change the color of the label next to the name. Here we add a new option. Or delete it. And with these, you can change the order of options. And then hit Save to apply, and you will be asked if you want to apply the changes to all other dropdowns, which I accept. Now when you click on either of the dropdowns, you'll have your new options added. And this creates a lot of new use cases with no need to go to Google Sheets or Excel. Basically on this example with the roadmap template, you know all about the table templates on Google Docs since the other ones. Are different variations of the same with just names changed, meant for quick use on different occasions. And then you combine all that with the new smart chips, enabled by a simple add sign that contain lots of commands inside of it. You can tag people, files, insert dates, mention events, or keep typing to conduct a quick search over all available actions, people and files to tag here. <laughs> the main difference from the regular tags is that the smart chips provide more details with the previews when you just hover over them, unlike with links that you need to press or go to their source to get the details. 
Smart chips allow you to embed text directly into the text of the document and it automatically emails the mentioned person. And this is how you use it. Type the add sign and the list with actions will pop up. You can expand categories and choose a person or type a keyword related to him and then click on the suggested result to confirm. Then you have files where at the top it suggests the recent ones but you can expand the category and choose another one or find a file by the keyword. Then the date, where the first line opens the calendar and lets you choose some day. Then the automatic input of today's and tomorrow's date. And then we have the events from the Google Calendar. And also you can turn links into the chips. For example, paste the link to the YouTube video. And it will suggest you pressing tab and it will turn into the chip. If it doesn't, click on the link and at the bottom of the pop-up, press chip. And now it is attached to this document. And once you get used to it, the tag menu offers a lot more commands like building blocks, inserting media, lists and many other things. The next is an email draft as a building block inside the Google document. Navigate to insert then building blocks around the middle and let's look at email draft first. Now you have this form looking like a reduced mail form on Gmail, which it is, and you know it, the recipient that you choose with an add sign, copy, blind copy, the subject and the email body itself. But due to this update, here inside the document you can compose a message with all aforementioned tools and all the tools existing in the Google Docs and send it this way. You can build a table inside, attach a media, add smart chips and many other features you have in Google Docs, but without the need to go to Gmail and having a huge selection of tools, which greatly increases the possibilities of a common email. Then click on the button with M on it, you'll be able to see a preview and then send it. The emoji reactions, you know, like in some messenger, where you can react to what a person sent you. And using them here is similar to commenting and suggesting edits. When you highlight a piece of text and then on this little sidebar on the right, pressing on the emoji icon, which will bring up a selector for you to explore and find a proper reaction or search for it by keyword in a field and top. And that's how it looks. Then it can be resolved or you can add one more emoji. Finally, something you may have noticed. It's using Google Meet inside a document with this button over here. This is the list of your upcoming calls if you have some, which you can start or join here right away without leaving the document. Or start a new meeting. The sharing link, microphone and camera settings, and the screen sharing, which will ask what exactly you want to show. We'll choose this exact tab with the Google document and confirm. And then you have this red frame around the captured area, indicating ongoing screen sharing and which part is shown to others, which doesn't even cover my tabs and other data in a browser. Then with the options button, you have a few more settings and stop screen sharing here. And that's how you do it. Start meeting right here, a little setup, share link, share screen and work on the dock together without even going anywhere right here. I personally find this one really convenient and the best on the list, since it cuts the time and doesn't let you lose focus in the work. And end in the call. Hundreds more guides and a lot of free Google Docs templates on thegoodax.com following the link below the video. Like to help share our videos to more people and subscribe to see more guides. I hope we helped you. Thank you for watching.